Become a supporter for my Patreon to get access to all my tutorial project files, including the one you're watching right now. Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to be learning how to make a map voting GUI. This map voting GUI is going to be displayed on all the player's screens and then the players will be able to select which map that they want and then the map with the highest votes at the end of the voting session will be selected and then it will spawn in. The first thing to do is go grab the model for the GUI in the description and put it inside of the starter GUI. You're going to see this kind of weird looking GUI and then you're going to want to add a script into the main frame and call this just voting GUI and then you'll take this selected frame and you're going to put this inside of the voting GUI so then you'll get something looking better and now we can start coding. So the first thing we do in our code is we get a remote event called voting inside of replicated storage and we also get a remote function called update votes and we get these in our script so we're also going to need to add them to our actual game so i'm just going to add into replicated storage our first one which is voting and this is a remote event and then a remote function and this is going to be update votes. The next thing is we get the main frame and then we're also going to create a table that's going to only consist of these columns right here and the reason we have to use a loop is because there is also these items such as the UI list layout, the gradient, some aspect ratios. So what we do in this loop is we go through all of the children of columns and if it's not a text button then we skip but if it is then we add it to the table so we'll have these three text buttons in our table and next we get these variables default size selected size selected border and animation time or anim time for short and the default size is going to be the normal size of one of these columns when it's not being voted for and then the selected size it's basically going to be the default size plus some pixels and then we have the selected border which is the thing that is inside of our script and what this selected border is going to do is anytime a player selects a selects a map that they want voted for, we're just going to move this selected border into that selection and then it'll look like it's been selected and give a nice effect. And then animation time is just the time it takes for it to go from the default size to selected size. And then when our voting event is fired on the client, we get two things, choices and timer. And what choices is, is the maps that we actually get to choose. So if, whether it's a grass map or a snowy map, it's the three maps that we get to choose from. And then timer is the time that we have to choose these maps. If we are given an argument of choices and it's not equal to null, then this is going to be where the actual map voting happens. But if not, then this is indicating that the map voting is ending and the players can't vote anymore. So we just make the mainframe visible equal to false. And if there is choices, then we need to make our visible, our mainframe visible equal to true. And we need to create a coroutine that is going to count down our timer. And it's going to make this text right here. It's going to make this text continuously count down until it hits zero. So now we need to actually render out our choices. And to do that, we also get a table an empty table called connections and this is going to contain all of the events for when someone is clicking one of these buttons because we're need, gonna need to clear them out after the map voting is done to actually render the things out we have we go through our choices that we've been given by the server we have the index and also the choice and the first thing we do is we get our text button with this index and we're just going to set its name to the choice dot name we're also going to set its name labels text to our choice name we're going to set the image labels image to our choices image and we're also going to set the size to default size we're going to we're going to set the votes label to zero votes because no one's voted yet and then we're going to set the selected borders parent to script which this actually doesn't need to be inside of the loop this actually goes out here because we don't want to do this three separate times. We just need to do it once. And now we're going to make a variable called vote connection. And this is going to be equal to the activated event when someone clicks on our text button. And what we're going to do is we're going to update to the server telling the server that we have switched our vote or we are voting for the first time. And then we're going to set our selected borders parent 
to our text button. And then we're also going to go through all of our voting columns and we're going to set their votes according to what the votes should be set at so that everything will be updated and we're also going to set the size of our selected column to be the selected size and then also set the size of the non-selected columns to be the default size by using tween size. And we're also going to need to table.insert into the connections table our vote connection. And then we also make this new quarantine called update thread and every 0.6 seconds you can change this if you want but this is how fast it's going to update the votes count and what we're going to do is we're going to get new updates from the server and we're going to do basically what we did up here we're just going to go through all of our columns and we're going to set the votes label text equal to the current amount of votes it has and then with our new coroutine, we're going to run this and we're going to use coroutine.resume. And then we're going to wait till the server fires this voting event again. And once they it does fire it again, it means that the voting's over. So we're just going to wait for it to fire again. And then we're going to close our coroutine. And then we're going to go through our connections and we're going to disconnect each one. And then the last thing for our client side is we just are going to add a nice spinning effect on all of these gradients by using run service and collection service. We're going to get all of the tagged elements with the tag spin on them. And we're also going to then use run service dot heartbeat. And we're going to go through our table of gradients, which is going to be all the things with the tag spin. And then we're just going to increase its rotation by our speed. So anything with the tag of spin is going to rotate which I've already made it but all of these gradients you can see have the tag spin so we can actually test this out if we want to just test out the spinning feature you can see that the gradients are spinning very slowly but it works and if you want to increase it if you want to increase it to something higher if you want to do something like three then it'll definitely work and you can now see the changes a little better and for our server side code, I'm just going to go into server storage. I'm going to add a new server script and I'm going to call this map voting. And just like our client script, we get the remote function and the remote event. We also have vote time, which is going to be how long the players have to vote. And then just for the actual main system, just as an example, I just put print new game. We're not going to have any GUIs or things telling the players what's happening in the game. This is just focusing on map voting. So it's just going to print new game so we can see what the server is saying. We're going to wait three seconds and then we're going to start our map voting by creating three variables and they're all going to be equal to empty tables. One is going to be map votes, player votes, and selected maps. And we're going to need to decide which maps we're going to be able to vote for. So we're going to get current maps, which is going to get the children of a folder in server st storage called maps. We haven't created this folder, so we're going to need to create that. And I'm just going to go into server storage. I'm going to add a folder. I'm going to call it maps. And then I'm just going to add, actually, I'm going to bring this folder into workspace first. And I'm going to put the parts into it. And also, if you would like, I'm going to make this frame invisible right now so I can see better. But I'm just going to quickly make our maps by just scaling up some parts as, as if they were our maps. So I've made my four maps right here, and they're nothing special. They're just for the examples. We have the desert, the beach, we have a snow one and a grass one. And what you're also going to want to do for these maps is for each map that you have whether it be a model or a part but you're going to go to the thing that's actually going to get chosen by the game and you're going to want to add an attribute to it and you're going to want to call this map img or short for image make it equal to a string and then you're going to want to put the image link into this attribute so the GUI will have something to show the players when it's showing them what maps they can vote for so I've just added some random images to our the map IMG attributes. So I just got some random images for the beach, for the desert, the snow and grass. And they're nothing actually what they look like. It's just to show that the GUI will display images. But with these maps and with their images added, we can take this folder 
add it to server storage and now our script won't break because there actually is a folder called maps with maps inside of it and now we can continue and what we're going to do is we're going to use a for loop and it's going to iterate three times because we're going to have three different maps to select because that's what our gui holds we're going to have a variable new map which is going to be equal to a random map inside of current maps and then we're going to remove that map from our current maps table we're going to insert into selected map a name which is going to equal to our new map dot name and the image of the map which is going to be new map get attribute map image and then this right here this table that we're inserting into the selected maps is going to be the thing that we give to the clients then we're going to set map votes where the key is equal to our new map dot name we're going to set that equal to zero showing that this map has zero votes and we're going to do that for all of the maps chosen and then we're going to fire our map voting event onto all of our clients and we're going to give it our selected maps and the vote time which are going to be these two values right here our choices and timer and then clients going to do all that stuff and they're going to get their choices and now when our update votes is invoked on the server we're equaling, equaling this to a function and we're going to get the player that is voting and their vote what we're going to do is just check to see if our vote is even in existing existing value and if it is we're going to check to see if the vote actually corresponds to an actual map so we have local map model which is going to be equal to our maps folder and we're going to find this map inside the folder and if there is not a map model or the map votes or if we can't find this map model's name inside of map votes then we know that this vote is not valid and then we just warn to the server saying that our vote is not a votable map and we return map votes but if there is an existing map and actually is valid then we're going to get the player's vote out of player votes using their player id and if they have voted before then we're going to set the map votes of this player's map vote minus one and then we're going to set this player's map vote to the vote and then set the new vote to plus one and now that we have set up the map votes and we have given the players the GUI so they can start voting we're going to just wait for the vote time to be over and then we're going to tell the players that the voting is over by firing the client with our map voting event and not giving them any maps to vote for and then we're going to set the update vote on server invoke to nil so we won't be updating any values if people are trying to still vote somehow and then we're going to create two variables chosen map and we're also going to have highest votes these are both going to equal this one's going to equal nil and this one's going to equal zero and we're going to determine the highest voted map by just going through the map votes and if the votes was higher than the highest voting map then we just make chosen map equal to our map inside of game.serverstorage.maps and set the highest votes to votes. And so we have determined our map and we've done the whole voting system and everything like that. So after this, it's up to you have how your round system works. But for example, I'm just gonna print that the chosen map was picked. I'm gonna wait three seconds. I'm gonna clone our map, put it into workspace. And also I'm gonna destroy it after 10 seconds. Then I'm just gonna wait 10 seconds and then just print game over and restart the cycle. But we can actually now test this out. If I go to play, you see that it's an empty game and you can see that I get three different choices. I'm gonna choose beach, let's just say, and let's just wait for this to be over, the map voting. Also opening up the output, you can see that it prints out new game and then it's gonna print that beach was picked. It's also gonna spawn beach in and, and we're not gonna get teleported or anything because we didn't make that. We're just gonna do the map voting. And we're just going to wait 10 seconds for this to be deleted. But once it is, we'll be given more maps to pick from. And it will run like normal. It says game over, new game. And look at that, we got more maps to vote. So I can just keep voting. And I also want to run this on a local server with multiple people. So we can see that it live updates for the other players. Telling them how much votes the other maps have. And that it all works with multiple players. You can see that I have a local server with three players. And each player has been given the GUI. And if you see here, let me just vote, let's say I vote grass with this character. You see that everyone else says that there's one vote. And if I vote, let's say desert with this person, it updates for them. I can update, I can vote for grass with this person, 
vote for desert with this person and it updates for all the different people and if we wait you'll see that grass is going to get picked because there was two votes for it and there you go there's two votes for that thank you so much for watching this video and huge shout out to all the supporters on the patreon jim barry it's isaiah r jackson kitty dragas bradley's world miles prince inter Rodois hussein noah bernard